Good afternoon. In today's gospel, Jesus tells guests at a feast to accept their invitation with humility, to be satisfied with the lowest place at the table. We are guests at a feast today, invited by our Lord to this wonderful Eucharistic meal. We come with humility, acknowledging our imperfections and sinfulness. Jesus also tells the host to invite those who are not well off, who cannot repay him in kind. Our host today at this feast is Jesus, who offers his very body and blood for our redemption. There is no way we can truly repay him for his generosity and mercy. Let us give thanks for his constant invitation. We now begin our prayer with hymn number 959, Make Us True Servants. For you alone are the Holy 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of my God, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself, the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. God, in your goodness, you have made it home The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. God, in your goodness, you have made it home the A bountiful rain you shower down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished. Your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. God, in your goodness, you have made it home for A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire, and gloomy darkness, and storm, and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn and enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Of honor at the table. 
When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may, they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. My friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. My part-time assistant up at St. Jude's, Father Shane Matthew, Shane is a professor at Gannon University, he used to tell my parishioners, he used to say, you know, after Ronald Reagan left office and Johnny Carson went off the air, Father Dennis's life came to a screeching halt. They said there's something wrong with that. But he said that, you know, he said that several years ago. And as I look back, I am wondering more and more if he's right. Yes, I'm only in my second month of my 60s, but I don't know about you. You know, when I wake up in the morning, you know, I put on the news, then hit the coffee, watch the news for a few minutes, and then I come to honestly believe that this country has gotten weirder and more insane since I went to bed, you know? And I say that every day. And after a few minutes of watching this, I then flick it back to Gilligan's Island or The Sopranos, because that's less crazy than what's going on in our world, that's for sure. You know, and when you move, for months you pull things out of boxes and bags or whatever else you threw, everything you own into. And there's some historical publications that, that I, I just say. I came across this supplement from Faith Magazine from April of 2005. It was when Pope John Paul II died, now St. John and I hadn't seen it for years, spent some time looking through it. It's just too bad that our young people, probably from college age on down now, never really got to experience the presence of this amazing man. In this supplement, there was this big article on John Paul's official visits to the United States. In fact, he made seven of them. And that doesn't include the five days he spent in Denver, 1993, when America hosted the World Youth Day. Well, the article stated how much, in these visits, Pope John Paul would challenge America, its people, by quoting long-standing icons of American culture. <clears throat> He'd quote the Declaration of Independence, uh, Martin Luther King, Thomas Jefferson, the Pledge of Allegiance, he even quoted in reference to America the Beautiful. For those who remember, on his first visit to America in 1979, John Paul visited the Statue of Liberty. In 1995, when he was at Giant Stadium having Mass in New York, St. Paul John Paul challenged the country about those very words that he had seen several years before, on the lady. It's on the plaque. Give me your tired, he quoted this, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift up my lamp beside the golden door. 
John Paul said to us almost 30 years ago, is present day America becoming less sensitive, less caring about the poor, the weak, the stranger, the needy? And with a very forceful challenge, answering his own question, he then said, it must not. So here we are, 28 years later, and this country is now so wrapped up in taking extreme sides, so divided in politics and everything else, making sure everyone knows my opinion that I put on every social media, and on and on and on. And in all of this craziness, are we remembering what brings us together, or constantly recalling everything that keeps us apart? And in the middle of all this, what about the person next door that no one talks to? Oh wait, I don't even know my neighbor's name. The only one there's a home that you might see at Thanksgiving. What about the kid that sits by himself at lunch every day? In all of this craziness, are we following the gospel of Jesus Christ and standing firm in my faith? And is there anyone out there that can testify that I am? Anyone out there that has been on the receiving end of my discipleship? This is the third time in Luke's gospel that Jesus entered the house of the Pharisee, a Pharisee for a meal. The two previous times, the meal became a confrontation, for the Pharisees were trying to get Jesus to say something that would get him condemned. Luke says, the people there were observing him carefully. What Jesus says, however, causes them to look inwardly at themselves, including his disciples, especially those that joined him on this journey to Jerusalem and stayed and stayed. The reference to seats or places of honor was a challenge to become a person of honor by taking the lowest seat. Becoming a person of honor by giving honor to the others present. Take care of the others first, for that is what makes a disciple, and that is what brings a disciple to the banquet of the Lord in heaven. If we allow ourselves to sit in humble places, make sure others have seats, make sure others are cared for, finding comfort, being given hope and peace and forgiveness, especially those in the most need, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, the grief-stricken, the outcast, the widow no one visits, the family member no one invites to Christmas dinner, if true disciples make sure all of those have seats, the Lord then will bring all of us then up to his higher table in his kingdom. Jesus was telling his disciples and the Pharisees that one doesn't get to that higher table by stepping ahead of or on everyone in front of them. One gets to God's table by bringing bringing everyone else with them. God gave us another day when we woke up this morning and brought us one day closer to him and his table. I suppose that what we have done in our past, past few years or whatever, is really, it's, it's irrelevant. There's nothing we can do about what we did in the past. It's done, it's over, forget it. But it is very often said, today is the first day of the rest of your life. So the future has unlimited possibilities. In 1987, when Pope John Paul was leaving Detroit, he said to America, the ultimate test of your greatness is the way you treat every human being, but especially the weakest and most defenseless one. 
may we be strong enough to accept this challenge of our discipleship. Search out for those who are in need of hope and God's love. May we be strong enough to give them, give them places of honor in our lives as well as in their own. This is what the Lord wants. This is what America is all about. This is something each of us can do personally in our own little world while in this big, weird, divided country. And this will assure us a place at that table in heaven. We're now one day closer to that meeting. What is our next move? Who is going to know God's love because of my faith? I wish you all God's peace. as we strive to be true disciples together as we profess our beliefs in that God gave us life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God, true God, true God. we God not made. approach our Lord with our needs and the needs of the least among us. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we make people of all backgrounds, cultures, histories, and walks of life feel welcome in this one body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country's leaders, may they be inspired to invite those who have difficulty paying their bills or putting food on the table to move up to a higher position at the banquet of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all God's creation, may we care for all that we love so that our world and our environment may be sustained for generations as numerous as Abraham and Sarah's. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who suffer in the heat of summer, especially those who are homeless and cannot afford adequate cooling, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the poor, may we extend God's generosity to all those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died, may they be welcomed into the joys of paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all the prayer requests through the prayer line and intention book for our needs and intentions that we now recall in our hearts. May these prayers be united with those of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, St. Tobias, our patron, and all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
generous God. You look a favor on your humble people. Listen to our prayers, which we offer with humility and contrition, and grant them according to your will, through your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for all the holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you laid the foundation of the world. And have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim.
Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and he said the blessing. And he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my blood, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and he gave you thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Father, the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and your entire people, 